Welcome to Prattle World. I am your host, the ever amazing, ever spectacular Spider Dan. And in this podcast, I spotlight entertainment's best kept secrets that a mainstream audience may find boring. And it's still Samurai Month. They say that revenge is a dish best served cold. And there is nothing colder than the blizzard from the netherworld, Lady Snowblood. And joining me to discuss this film is our very own Flower of Carnage, Rasheen McCuska. Welcome <laughs> back, Rasheen. Uh, thank you for Hello. joining me for the Samurai Month. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. Um, so we have both watched, uh, we both introduced, I've introduced you and I've mm-hmm. introduced myself to the film Lady Snowblood, Blizzard from the Netherworld. A uh, very yep. influential film, which we'll no doubt mm-hmm. discuss. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, it's 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 definitely something I would highly recommend seeing. Probably not the easiest film to get hold of, but we are going to go well into spoilers as well, so just to warn people. Um, but I want to start with just giving all of our listeners just a brief overview uh, of what the film's about. What is the plot of Lady Snowblood? And I'll let you uh, do the honours. Thank you. Uh, So in Lady Snowblood, we follow a young woman, Yuki, who was born in prison and was basically conceived and born to avenge the death of her father and her older brother and the brutalisation of her mother. And so we follow Yuki as a child going through training for that, for the events Mm -hmm. and uh, through her adult life where she stalks and gets her revenge on the people that acted out these horrific doings to a family. Yeah, very well summed up. Uh, completely, <laughs> uh, it's it's Thank pretty you. it's pretty cut and dry to be honest. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so it's, there's not a lot of depth, not not that many twists and turns. It's like, yeah, lady yeah. wants revenge. I quite like that though. It's like, okay, great, you're in you straight away, brilliant, let's go. Yeah, like sometimes you just need a good A to B story. You don't need like lots of all this other kind of random stuff. Just tell me a good, straightforward story. Yeah, there is a there is a couple of twists though. One that I did not see coming in the slightly in, in the slightest, but I will go into that. Oh later. yeah, I'm not talking about. I'm just signalling to Dan. <laughs> Yes. That, that whole bit. That, that whole heck? bit. Yeah, that was kind of that was a weird bit. But um that was before its time, I think. Oh, absolutely. Very um <laughs> very mission impossible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, space off. <laughs> um, <laughs> um well it is it is in fact based on a on a Japanese manga. So it, it does have a there is a comic book feel to it. So there is a bit of that kind of heightened yeah. reality to it. I and definitely you definitely get a sense of that. So because she's Lady Snowblood herself is 
you know, is, is basically kind of like a Batman, kind of like well-trained, the best of the best, and kind of out for revenge, um, mm-hmm. righting wrongs or wronging rights, if you will, whenever you want to, whichever way you mm-hmm. want to put it. But um, she is a, she is a, she is a blizzard from the netherworld. She is a, she's a cold gust of wind that uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't want anywhere near me. My God, you know, um, <laughs> I wouldn't have any limb, I wouldn't have any limbs left. Um, <laughs> That's, she's that she's that good. Yeah, so it is it's based on a manga by um a guy called Kazu Kazuo Koiki. By the way, again, I'm gonna butcher all the Japanese names today, so I do apologize up front. <laughs> so he's a big prolific writer in manga in Japan, and he also produced um uh, Lone Wolf and Cub, which is basically uh it's a samurai and this child, um, oh. and again, very influential uh book that became a film series in itself. And then there was a kind of a mashup of the first two films for America called Shogun Assassin, which is very similar and all I've heard of that, yeah. Oh yeah, you'll have yeah, you'll have definitely heard of that. Um, it's it's probably about as violent as this. Lots of lots of uh, okay. dismemberment. <laughs> uh, weirdly, in that version as well, the child narrates the story, like the baby narrates the story. Oh, and he's got this like armored pram. It's kind of like a Batmobile. It's got all these blades <laughs> that shoot out. Like, and the baby probably murders just as many people as the dad does. So. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Mental, um, but yeah. Also, Crying Freeman as well is a, another another film adaptation of his manga he's created as well. Um, so very influential, very big writer, very left wing left wing leaning as well, um, which okay. we see we see a bit in this film and and subsequent other work. I have to say, I just I really enjoyed this. Just a gorgeous film, like cinematography yeah. wise, yeah. Uh, one of my, one of the most beautiful films as well, and. And it's also one of the most brutal films as well. Um, oh yeah, considering it was seventy three as well when it, it was made. Oh it's yeah, it's just like leaps and bounds ahead of stuff. So I'm a very big fan of horror films, mm. but it was, it was well ahead of any kind of slasher, gore, any mm. anything like that that was being made in the late seventies, really. Yeah, it's it's all like it's and it's really graphic. It's not like it doesn't shy yeah. away from the violence. Um, yeah. Like so, so brutal. Um, yeah, and it's and it's edited in a way that's really it's it's almost like she's cutting into the screen with her sword. Like mm. that's how, and it's just gorgeous. It's it's somewhere between like a, a really nice kind of art house film and then yeah. like pure exploitation. You know, like you're, yeah, yeah, really quite theatrical as well. Oh yeah, Actually. yeah. There's, oh, definitely some kind of like no theater in, influences. I think. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's. I think there's there's be- there's beauty in its brutality, and there's brutality in its beauty. I think I would yeah. I would say about this film. Mm. You you're a you're a big fan of kind of female led kind of revenge films. We talked about it before. Yeah. So did you get a lot out of this in, in that in that vein? Yeah, I did, and I think um, it was just nice to see like oh, this was already being done. Like I say, way before the films that I grew up on, <laughs> slasher films <laughs> were, were being made. And I'm a, yeah, huge fan of the female revenge film. So this was really great. This was a strong story. She was a great actress. And you just thought, yeah, go and kill him. Go, yeah, <laughs> go for it. it. Yeah. I, I always like in like revenge films, I kind of like, like I like the, I always like the moral question and the moral ambiguity of it. Like, should we yeah. do it? Is it is it worthwhile? Is it not more? You know, it's an eye for an eye. You know, leave the whole world blind. You know, that sort of thing. And I think, obviously, this heavily influenced Kill Bill. Again, we're going to get into that, but I think with Kill Bill, it does kind of kind of. It's not as this film is nowhere near as kind of like triumphant or righteous as as Kill Bill is. I would say this one is constantly questioning whether the whole thing is righteous or is worth doing or yeah. whether Lady Snowblood is in the right. And and at every point you're kind of, you're going, oh, yeah. And obviously these never end well for anybody, these revenge yeah. films. Sorry, there's definitely um, some moments throughout that where she is questioning everything. And I think it's just quite sad for her that, well, this is why she was born. Mm. Essentially, and this is her. Like, this is her path. This is going to be her. Oh, I'm trying to look for the word. Destiny. Yeah, a destiny. If, yeah, but this is uh, like her family honor that she's avenging, and it's it's just really quite sad for her because, well, what else 
is she going to do now with her life yeah. basically she spent her whole life in training so she kind of does go and avenge a family that she never even met in the in the setup so again much like a tarantino film this film is told out of order as well yeah out of chronological order so we learn we start it opens with the birth in the prison which is kind of heartbreaking already this very difficult difficult birth um of this child um who they call uh, yuki or uh, i think it's uh, Shur- shura yuki hime i'm gonna say yeah. um which her name is actually a play on words so it's oh. It's the combination of the the name they use for Snow White in Japan, oh, no. and then they also instead of I think that's Shira uh, Shira Yuki email email, um, but then they they put the word carnage uh, in oh. it. So that's kind of where the word the name Lady Snowblood comes from, um, oh, nice. which I thought is quite it's quite clever as well. Um, but yeah, we have that birth. We see her in action against some criminals yeah. um, doing a thing um, with her iconic umbrella. Uh, hidden yeah, that was, that was cool. I love that she's like, yeah, she's just this timid, you know, you know, quiet, reserved Japanese woman. And then, you know, shink, out comes the yeah. sword. It's like, <laughs> she's anything but that. Chop, chop, chop. Yeah. It's brilliant. That that Just that opening sequence is great where she, they're like, who are you? And she's like, yeah. I am revenge. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. Love that. It's very, very, again, very Batman. Uh, my, yeah. r- reminds me of Bane as well. Like she's born in a prison, like Bane was. So yeah, I, so. yeah. It was a great introduction, though, to the character because that's the first time. I mean, we see her when she's a baby, but then yeah. the next scene, obviously, it's her. And she's, is she about 20? Is that what the saying she is? Yeah, I think 1920, uh, yeah. rough, roughly. Um, I think that's kind of how, how they, they, because they keep saying like 20 years. So I'm, you know, and I imagine yeah. she gives birth to the child not long after that. The reason the mother's in prison, I mean, I'll go back to the the original thing. So mm-hmm. um, this gang of criminals mistake the the father. Well, not even not even her father actually, is it? It's not. It's totally not. You know what I love? I love that she kind of doesn't have a father. Yeah. It's almost as if revenge is her father. That's her father figure. It's it's mm. you know that's that's the altar that she prays to. It doesn't. Yeah. It's a, Forget all the forget all the blokes. All the blokes in this are mostly awful, anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, for the most part, not great guys. Um, you know, and she's and, and again, you know, she's not necessarily great herself, obviously, with the whole the whole thing. But it's all it's all very morally ambiguous. The whole film. Yeah. Um, the original. We'll call him the father, but he's not her actual father. But mm-hmm. the her mother's her mother's husband. Let's say yeah. that. He gets mistaken for one of these political people and is murdered by this gang of criminals. Then the child is also murdered in a the the you know a half brother, I guess, um, yeah. is murdered quite brutally. And and then the you don't you don't see that though. You see like the aftermath of it, don't you? Yeah, you just see the kind of uh, a bloodied head body, and, the, yeah. and the body. Um, yeah. yeah, and then you kind of have this. I think I think it was you know what I think they do this this whole scene. I think is is done quite well like it's not it's not uh too much uh this whole kind of um a sexual assault uh rape scene and- yeah no i did i did quite like the way they did it like without the sound mm. and then they use the sound of the pregnant like the birth mm. on top of it um but even at that point you're, you're thinking oh is this who her real father is is this yeah. from this attack and you don't and then later on in another out of chronological order bit you the mother reveals, no, this is how I actually sought to get pregnant. The murder of her mother's husband and half brother. Yeah, yeah, I guess we are. Um, yeah, just it's it's almost quite dance, quite dance like, and uh, I don't know whether that's down to uh, just the level of what they could do back then in filmmaking to make the fights look as real as possible, or to kind of go, well, we can't really do that, so let's choreograph it like this and it is more of a yeah, yeah it's, it's more it's more theatrical it's more like a dance it's more choreographed yeah. but I, th- I think that adds to her character as well like the yeah. that, it, that it is this kind of stylized form of fighting and obviously yeah. she's in this kind of traditional kind of uh, kimono I guess you would call it or um you know Japanese female dress um mm-hmm. you know this attire which is not really the kind of attire you would have for fighting uh, no. 
but it's almost like she's developed her own way of of because it's like that's her disguise that's her you know you know i'm um, i'm this timid japanese woman oh no yeah. shink you know how comes yeah. the sword out of the umbrella uh i'm the last person you want to mess with and i think i think she's clearly because it's a restrictive outfit she's clearly come up with a way to kind of move yeah. and and attack and defend in her um, own in her own way one point where uh, uh sleeve gets cut and she shoots them a look as you say my outfit <laughs> yeah yeah you're in trouble now it's it was, yeah. very, it was a very much like I got a very like a very um Sigourney Weaver type of uh yeah. vibe from it I was like oh you mm. messed with the wrong person now you're gonna get it um and yeah but go, going back to that that opening obviously don't want to don't want to dwell on that too much but obviously you know it, it occurs but it's not it's not gratuitous it's not a gratuitous kind of no, it's um, not. um and it's it's done in a way that's still like effective and upsetting um but it's it's not it's not so much where you're like okay this is just grimy and, and sleazy and horrible now you know yeah. um an interesting thing as well is that uh, Meiko Kaji, in Japan, there was a movement at the time where the cinema was going towards more kind of softcore porn um, in Japan. Uh, okay. they, were, they were making films called, because they, they were they were seemingly becoming popular at the time. Uh, they were called pink films, they were called. Um, and the studio that Meiko Kaji was in was was moving towards these kind of films. She was totally against it. You know, she, mm-hmm. she wasn't up for that. That's not her bag. You know, she she just felt it wasn't it wasn't for her. Which you know, mm-hmm. and and if it's for some people, it's for some people. If it's not for some people, it's not for some people. Um, so she made that decision to move away, and all of her films, she she requests that the nudity be removed. There doesn't need to be nudity. Um, and in the manga, there is a fair. Brilliant, bit of, that's amazing. Yeah, um, and and again, back in back in those times, making those oh. demands, she had the star power to do that. And the clout to do that, which was amazing. So all of her, all of her films that she has, she doesn't, she doesn't do nudity. Um, and and I thought, I thought that was really good. I I think it kind of helped with this film. I don't think you needed nudity. I don't think it would have added anything. No, not at all. I think it would have felt really out of place, to be honest. Yeah, I think I think with so- the t- with the setting and the time of, of of it, it would it just yeah, it just feels a bit wrong to me. Yeah, but uh, even with um. Obviously, the scene we meet one of the characters later on, mm. and what we see what his daughter does. Like you don't even see really anything there as well. That could have been really good. Yeah. Theater. So on the path to revenge, so we mm-hmm. we we uh, Yuki's mother uh, gets pregnant from prison guards in prison. Mm-hmm. Has has Yuki dies after the childbirth. It's raised by she's raised by another prisoner, another mm-hmm. female prisoner who doesn't have a life sentence, and she's raised by this priest who teaches her martial arts. And sword mm-hmm. fighting, and, and, and have to stay in a barrel. <laughs> yeah, <it's> a st- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, stay everyone, in a barrel when you're getting pushed down a hill. <laughs> everyone needs to know how to stay in a barrel. Everybody. Yeah. Um, that's that's a life lesson. It's a life lesson. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then and then we see her kind of quest when she reaches like 20 years of age. She starts her quest. And I think the is it is it the first one she finds that one so she meets this very uh this kind of I don't know, this odd looking guy, this gang of like ruffians. Yeah. Um, and then she kind of requests them to help her find the villains that did this to her mother and her family. Oh yeah, the fools. Yeah, I, all- I saw them as like the fools. They're almost a bit yeah, they're, they're all like t- teeth are coming out. They're like, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah. you know, <laughs> yeah. it's very like it's very hills have eyes or something. Um, yeah, and they agree, they do agree to help her, and they manage to find information on t- certain people. The there's mother, four, isn't there? yeah, there's four. So the mother kills one, uh, and that's why she goes to prison. And then we've the there's one that she believes is dead because she yep. finds the grave. And I love yep. I love that scene as well where she realizes everything she's done all this preparation her entire life is nothing but revenge and she can't even get that satisfaction of mm. of killing of, of getting the satisfaction and and even if and that's the question is even if she did get it would she have been satisfied would she yeah. be satisfied with the revenge um yeah. and she's and she's hacking away she's hacking away at the grave and stuff the flowers. and the flowers and mm. and and it's, uh, it's I, I love that she's not just this stone cold killer. Like she, there is yeah, like a robot. Yeah, because she she easily could have been, and it still could have been good. But yeah. I like I like that you've got a little bit that she's a kind lady. You know, she she treats people well, but mm. 
But once she once she sees a target, it's like you know, there's blood in the water. She's like, she smells the blood in the yeah. water, and she will like, she will go, and there will, nothing will stop her. And it doesn't matter who's involved, doesn't matter who's related. Mm-hmm. Lady Snowblood is 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 coming for you. So we learn that. But the first victim, mm-hmm. is, or the first villain, sorry, is this kind of old drunk that you were talking about a little bit earlier, which yeah. I think is, that is Banzo. Banzo, yeah, yeah, and his daughter uh, Kobu, mm-hmm. Kobu, I believe, I think. But yeah, do you want to, do you want to talk about talk about that that particular one? Because I think that's the first time you really question whether it's worth getting this revenge at this point. Yeah. So she meets. Um, I think she sees she. Well, the the guys help her track down where he is, um, or where his daughter is. I think. Um, yeah, it is Kobu. Um, so she is basically a prostitute to support her father which I just thought that's just absolutely horrific. Um, So, yeah, she meets Kobu, and who's lovely, obviously, and uh, it's just kind of like trying to take her in a little bit and make sure she's all right. And then Yuki um, hears that there's a gambling room in this kind of complex where they're they're all kind of staying. And um, so she goes in as a, what do you call them, where they kind of deal everything out, I guess like a croupier, I guess, something yeah, like that. Yeah, a croupier. So she she dresses up, she puts it on top of her robe, which I loved. And um, she sat dealing out, um, yeah, this kind of, I'm not quite sure what the game is actually. I think it looks like a card game. Um, but yeah. then Shaw walks in Banzo, which is the first one I think she's seen face to face, isn't it? And it's this really nice moment where she's almost too stunned that she's like, oh, it's him. And she just kind of doesn't do anything. Well, I think she doesn't do anything because she's she wants to she's yeah. smart and she's not yeah. just gonna yeah. whip out a sword and kill him in front of a room of 15 other men. Hmm. So um anyway, the game carries on and you see that Banzo's like a massive drunk and he's got these like his gambling problem. And anyway, she catches him cheating, but not only does she catch him cheating in the in the game, but someone else does, and they grab him and take him out of the room straight away. And she I think she knows that he's going to either be beaten to a pulp or murdered and she can't have that. So she runs into the room and says, um, no, it's my fault. It's my fault. I should have, I should have seen that he was cheating and it's don't kill him. It's my, like I should have called him out and getting, got him removed from the game. So they kind of uh, agree. Well, they don't agree, but I think the owner of the complex comes in and he kind of says, yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. You, you take him away. Yeah. So she does. And then he, Banzo, is then kind of like, oh, I, I owe you my life. Thank you so much for doing that, blah, blah, blah. And she takes him down to the beach and she basically reveals her identity. And he goes, I was wrong. I was wrong. It was wrong. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. And she stabs him and leaves him to topple into the water and drown as well. Th- yeah, uh, th- drags him to the top of the cliff just to throw him into the into the water. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I, did, I, I quite like that because you're introduced to Kobu and she's making these wicker baskets, like these really intricate yeah. wicker baskets. And you yeah. learn that that's just a cover because she goes to be to be a prostitute because her father yeah. is this drunk and, you know, uh, he's ill and he's drunk and, you know, he's yeah. useless. And all she's doing is just throwing them into the water. She makes them just to throw them into the water. Like she doesn't yeah. sell them, um, you know, and it's like, it's just, and then, then he basically goes down that same way. Like it's the same cliff. Yeah, oh yeah. 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 Um, yes, it's 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 uh to be fair. It is, it is it is poetic. And he's like he's like, you know, I've got a daughter, think of my daughter, think of this, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I'm he's remorseful. Yeah. But, you know, and you think you think, you know, he's a broken man, he's he's not getting anywhere. You know, Have he suffered enough already, is his punishment that like he's this massive loser. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um but then yeah, there's a lovely bit with Kobu at the end of that sequence where Yuki kind of says, which is very reminiscent to something else we're going to talk about, which mm. says, look, if you ever want to find me, contact this person and go here and you'll, this is where I'll be. And she, Koba doesn't, because she doesn't quite allude, she doesn't allude to the fact that she's just murdered her dad mm. at all. She just kind of gives her that information and then leaves. And Koba's just kind of like, oh, right, I don't really know what that was about, but mm. she, soon, <laughs> she soon finds out. But yeah, <laughs> I, I really liked that bit, and my ears pricked up, and I thought, "Oh, there we go." 
Yeah, very yeah. good. Well, let's talk about it now. Let's do let's let's get it all out in the open. So Okay. So uh, there is I mean there's it's not not just yourself, but a lot of people online that may have said that, you know, Quentin Tarantino has ripped off Lady Snowblood for mm-hmm. Kill Bill. There are there is music, so Flower of Carnage is used. Um yeah. you know, it, uh, the Flower of Carnage, does it bookend the film? It's definitely at the beginning. Yeah, but then it, it's played at the end as well. I, I think, but uh, yeah. it's a beautiful song. But oh, that's it's gorgeous! In volume one of Kill Bill, that's correct. Um, so so yeah, it does book. It is after the the battle with uh, Oren Ishii, who mm-hmm. uh, Lucy Liu plays. Who mm-hmm. again, her entire outfit, her entire look for that scene is is in is very influential. You've got shots that are just taken. From from the film, you've uh, I mean even the way they die like if you you watch that big crazy eighty eight fight and they're all yeah the party yeah and they're all having their arms and legs chopped off and there's blood like I mean mm-hmm. again again with all this Japanese cinema I've been watching everyone's like just a high pressure bag of blood and it's just like yeah. sh- just streaming yeah. everywhere with all this blood I, I really quite like that technique because it is almost if you couldn't have really made it look that realistic, then let's go over the top and make it mm. super theatrical. And like it's similar with like Giallo movies, like with Dario Argento, when the like it, it, it's very it's beautiful because it just kind of pisses out. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it, it makes these like beautiful shapes and like the, the surroundings and just completely covers it. Um, which Tarantino uses yet yeah, in Kill Bill, but that's also in Lady Snowblood. Um, and as well, the colour of the blood as well is almost like this orangey. So it's 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 almost like they're going, yes, this is fake. We're not trying to make it look like. Listen to the story. Don't look at the how realistic the gore is. I guess. Yeah, I also they also um like they also focus in on each of the the villains. So like in Kill Bill, they do like this is this is part of the Viper Kill Squad, assassination yes. squad. And they go, this is their name. This is what they do. This is their code name. And they yes. do that, they do that in Lady Snowblood. They go, this is their name. This yeah. is who they are. Um and it kind of gives you the your kind of hit list um yes. quite quite literally. Um yeah. and we and we see that throughout the film. Um and in the beginning where the attack happens, the first attack happens with the mother and uh, her husband and the child. Um, there is that shot that I think it's about 10 minutes into the movie and it's the four killers in Lady Blood looking over. I think it's the mother. I think it's the mother. Yeah, mother, yeah. And it completely is mirrored in Kill Bill 1 and 2 when they all stood over the bride. And it's it's uncanny. It's literally the same. Even almost the heights are kind of the yeah. same as well. They they're all put in a certain in in a certain order. Hmm. But um, yeah, it's extremely influenced. Yeah. So people. so do you, do you think do you think he's paying homage or like I, or do you think it's still fairly original? Like I was saying before, it's not as like Kill Bill is very much like. She does. This woman deserves her revenge, you know. Like, yeah. like Michael Madsen says, this woman and we deserve to die, you know. Yeah. It's fully. They go. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's true. She. This yeah. is a righteous cause. But Lady Snowblood, it's it's you're constantly questioning it the whole time. Yeah. Um, it's difficult because I think you can you can easily like be influenced by something and then there is a complete rip off. Mm. But then there, there is such a thing as being like heavily influenced. Mm. I don't. I'm not quite sure because um, there's a few films that have completely ripped off the you know the Exorcist three the the scare where something just cuts runs across the screen straight away and mm. you just go oh my god like yeah it's literally ripped it off. It's not you can't be influenced by that. Um, but with this, I don't know. It almost feels like Lady Snowblood's almost like a prequel, even though it's not the same story. Hmm. You know, I've just got that sense that this is what happened. I don't know in a time before, but yeah, there are very similar. I mean, similar cinematography. We've discussed like the the score and uh, like the music, but the certain shots like we've we've already mentioned. But even just there's a shot uh, where I think it's we're focusing on Yuki when she's ten, and um, also at the training camp, and it starts in the 
trees and it shoots straight down and we see her and then that's Im- imitated in volume two with um when uh Beatrix is at her training camp is it is it Pi May? Yeah I think so. The guy yeah. with the long beard. Mm. Um so it's it's almost like I, I don't I I don't mind things like that. I think it's it's kind of like so th- that's her training story and then here's her training story. And here just to kind of go, yeah I know it's similar but we're, we're not going to completely rip it off. I was going to use that one shot with the camera pans down from the trees to follow her walking up the path. So yeah, I don't mind like little nods and things like that. I was even I was even really interested to see actually if anyone from the movie Lady Snowblood was in Kill mm. Bill because he likes to have his little cameos, doesn't he? And little insider uh, nods, basically. Yeah, of course, but, um, of course, I couldn't yeah. find any. I, I couldn't find anybody. I thought, is it, is it the trainer? Is he in? Because they do all look quite familiar as well, actually. Yeah, but, I know. Um, Hattori Hanzo is Sonny Chiba, who um, did um, the Street Fighter movies. Um, yeah. If you if you watch True Romance, which Tarantino wrote, the, yeah, uh, he uh, Christian Slater's character goes to the cinema to see Sonny Chiba in. Ah. In the Street Fighter movies, um, so so he's clearly yeah. he's clearly a fan of him. Pine May is played by um, a, an actor who did a lot of kind of the Shaolin movies. Um, yeah, uh, most famously, I think it's Thirty Sixth Chamber of Shaolin, um, and he does mm. all the martial arts stuff, and that's that's why he's still so good at it. You know, even in Kill Bill. Yeah. And I always like that character. He's just constantly stroking the beard and laughing. I love that. It's so funny because I used to have them both on VHS and they were like, there was the massive VHS tapes. Like I think I must have just got them when they were being, like, they were no longer selling well at like, not even Blockbuster. I think it was just like a private little VHS shop we have n- mm. near ours. Yeah, so they were just in the bin, like the little gated bins that they had in the middle. It was just like, yeah, two for five quid or something. So I used to just hammer them. I used to watch them every night at, for like weeks on end, so I was a big but fan. You're, of the you're a big fan. When I was younger. I couldn't. I, first time I saw it, I couldn't really get into it. I couldn't get. Mm. I couldn't get into the vibe. Um, but like on repeated viewings, I do. I do really enjoy it. Um, I think. Yeah. I think. I, I think I prefer as much as I like Volume One. I think I prefer Volume Two more. Yeah, there's um because I I think I, when I was younger I loved the Volume One more, but now that I'm older. Purely, as soon as from I think from Pi May from that bit to the end is just phenomenal. Like the fight with Daryl Hannah in the trailer, yeah. the whole training session I just think is hilarious. And obviously the ending, you're like, oh, did not see that coming. Um, well, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 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 a shock. It's a surprise. Um, mm. Yeah, it's it's definitely heavily influential. However, you fall on it. I still think both are very good films in their own right. I, again, like it's not it's not just a sh- I mean, you could argue that if he hadn't watched Lady Snowblood, he still would have been influenced by all the other kind of female 70s yeah, revenge movies, I think, because there's a lot in yeah. there, you know, there's a lot of influences in Kill Bill regardless. But yeah, that that one does come to the forefront. Um, even even the use, there's a use in Lady Snowblood of the pages from the manga, which um Yeah, I was I was gonna say. It's like the introduction of Lucy Liu's character, Oranishi, when we see it's like the the comic book. Mm. When I spotted that in Lady Snowblood, I was, I was like, oh, that's that's kind of the the first time I've seen that. Yeah, like obviously it's not animated, but it's kind of like a it's no. kind of a quick kind of you you're shown various panels of the comic book um, yeah. manga very quickly. Um, mm-hmm. Also in that animated sequence as well, when Oren Ishii's parents are dying. It, there's a framed picture, and within the framed pr- picture, there is an umbrella. Oh, no way. So it's almost like that's – maybe this is why I, I've got the prequel kind of feeling. Mm. It's almost like, well, over and Ishii is Lady Snowblood or something like that, like we're watching her story. Yeah, or like a like a – like a an an, am, an ancestor or something maybe something like that. Yeah, maybe that's just what the kind of vibe that I got, which is quite nice. Yeah, I don't know if you wanted to go back to Lady Snowblood and the kind of weird mm. twist that no one will see coming because is it almost ridiculous? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I mean the whole film is quote unquote probably a little ridiculous, but that kind of that that's what I like about it. Like you said, it's very theatrical, it's very over the top, heightened reality. Um, but yeah, like go go ahead. You 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 run with that. Um, well, she meets some, she meets a reporter. Is, would you say he's a reporter? He's definitely writing about her, isn't he? He writes about a story. Yeah, so he's, 
he's he sees her kind of um cutting the flowers at the at the graveyard um and he's like who is this lady what's she doing uh, yeah. and then he, he goes he talks to her and and then eventually he becomes really interested in her and she's like please fuck off basically gives him that death stare do not yeah. talk to me do not come near me do not even get to know me you would want no part of this um and uh, and then he, we find out that he's been contacted by the priest who trained her and and he basically tells the origin story of Lady Snowblood and publishes it. And people are like, "Well, this seems quite real. This is very, you know, is this real? Is this is this?" Yeah. And one person who reads it turns out to be that one of the two that are left. Mm. Oh no, wait, no. So the one, the one that's left at this point. Mm. So she's just killed Banzo, and then we discover that the female of mm. the bandits has read this story and uh, and she's basically she's basically um because basically the priest says we want to bring them out because we can't we're struggling to find the last person our last target so we need yeah. to we need to draw them out in some way and this is like he's given him every single detail for this story and he's done all the kind of he's drawn all the images and everything and people are like it's a very popular story and people are like mm, this seems like is this fiction is this fact um and then eventually he's he's taken in by the police again. Like during this period of the Meiji period in in yeah. uh, Japanese history, I've talked about in prior podcasts to this. Um, there was a lot of corruption. A lot of I mean, they say it in the film as well. They talk about the corruption and how um, people are mistreated in, during this period in Japan. And uh, the yeah. corrupt police take him away, and then they're led. Uh, to uh, I think it's o- Okono or o- Okono, yeah, we'll say Okono, um, and she's the female villain. And um, I, d- I don't know, but it's something about something about the the things that obviously the things that happened to Yuki's mum, and it and it being and it also like the thing, and she's there laughing and watching and enjoying it. Mm-hmm. And I find that I find that even more disturbing the fact that she's a woman and you know yeah and- I do as well I don't know what it is maybe it's just been drilled into us that women are like not not like this but yeah yeah and then that's why it's just more of a just more of a shock and I think it's because it's it, well you're a woman yourself so how can you find amusement in that because it yeah. could easily happen to you as well or something maybe it's something like that yeah, but yeah she's um I mean she's absolutely horrendous but she did give me like you know, the mum in the goonies kind of vibe <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I kept getting that from her. Um, but yeah, she's violent. Um, yeah, go on, you explain. I've... Um, yeah, I, well, we it's drawn out. He's beaten. He's like, she's like, you know, a little bit too much. This yeah, is, this is could... too. This is too accurate. How do you know? Yes, these details? too accurate. That's what she says. Yeah, I, I, it's not. It's not. There's, there's something going on here, and he's like, he's like, well, I just wrote the story, so whatever, mm-hmm. you know. Um, it's kind of, it's a bit like that bit in Spider Man where J. Jonah Jameson says, "The stuff comes in the mail. I don't know, Lady Snowblood, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not anything that's to do with me." Um, yeah. But then we get a really good kind of fight sequence. Lady Snowblood uh, just just rocks up. Um, what's thunder sand? That's what they say the smoke bomb is. They go, it's thunder sand, I think. I think they say that, but I'd never heard of that before. I was like, thunder sand, what? Yeah. I'm not breathe. Like, yeah, it's I I imagine it's some sort of grenade, kind of like a smoke grenade or yeah, I didn't like know if it was poison real. or something. Mm. But yeah, that sequence is great because then she jumps down and it's very much I mean, she's always kind of, in a lot of her fighting sequences, it's always kind of her in the middle of like a bunch of different men. Mm. And um she just takes them all out one by one. Yeah, but the bit where a, a Kono, is it a Kono? Yeah, let's say a Kono. Let's say a Kono. Um, sneaks off. And again, we have that moment where it's like the grave where she, re- oh, I don't know if, am I allowed to say it, what happened? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We've, we've said, we've said spoilers. So if any, yeah, so, they should have, so, they should have gone to see the film now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so a Kono sneaks off and Yuki's looking for her and it has like a bit, where it did kind of remind me of Kill Bill again when the party where the crazy eight are and over and Ishi goes behind them the sliding doors and so she's kind of like running the, the both it's almost like mirrored the they're looking for the they're looking for each other hmm. um through the sliding doors and you think oh gosh she's got away she's got away so we have to go run down and chase her and then she goes through this kind of secret room 
and she just sees that Okono has hung herself. And again, it's that moment by the grave where she's not managed to get to her. And she's just kind of stunned. But then she still, she chops her in half, doesn't she? <laughs> she goes, right, well, you've killed yourself. I'm just going to not decapitate her. She ch- chops her from like a waist yeah. down. Just cuts her, yeah, cuts her directly in half, kind of. Yeah. Um, and again, I love that deer in headlights type thing where it's like, oh, yeah. oh, they're here. I've got them. And then yeah. I don't quite know what to do with this. I've I've been working to this point all my life. What do I do? Will I do oh. it? Won't I do it? And yeah. and again, like it's she the character Okono kind of reminds me of kind of like um, you know that like hag horror where it's like like old ladies kind of. Um, kind of uh, what, whatever happened to Baby Jane, that type of horror yeah. movie, uh, yeah. where it's kind of like an old, like kind of witchy type thing. Um, yeah, because when <laughs> women get older, we turn into witches. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. No, no. No, <laughs> no, that's, no the, that's that's the, yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the conceit of that type of horror. Um, exactly, yeah. But she's proper caked in makeup as well, which I think makes even yeah. more like like so much so much makeup on her, and I and I think that kind of almost makes her almost like a wax figure, like she's almost like melting. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's definitely, I think, probably arguably the most kind of cowardly of of the. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Because she she uses a gun. She's got a gun for a yeah. start. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that actually. I was a bit, and then later on, there's another gun. Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, like a, I think I think the I think the one she has is kind of more like a kind of a musket type thing, and then the one later mm. is kind of a, uh, like a, a revolver. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm not, it's uh, it was interesting. I didn't expect it. Yeah, I didn't I did not expect guns. Yeah, well, I think I think you, with this with this type of film, like some people might argue with me that this is technically not like a samurai film, but I okay. think. I think it falls within the um there's a there's a genre in Japan they call it shanbara which is basically mm-hmm. means sword fighting. Um okay. And most most samurai films fall into this genre. It's it's yeah. a sword fighting genre. So so um and technically historically there wasn't many kind of Japanese female samurai or anything like that. Mm-hmm. There were there were female ninjas who would use their like sexuality and and ability to assassinate people um and use that as a as a weapon. Um but it, historically it was pretty rare. So and mm-hmm. arguably Lady Snowblood probably isn't really like doesn't follow like the code of the samurai and things like that. So you could probably mm-hmm. argue she's not a samurai, but Bye. I think it kind of falls within it's it's close enough for me to to for yeah. it to fall within there. Um and again, she's amazing with a sword. So, you oh, know, yeah. I, I see her as, as a samurai, uh, even if maybe some people want to fight with me. F- come and fight me. Come and fight me. Um, <laughs> I have an umbrella. I have an umbrella. I've, yeah, I've got an umbrella, <laughs> Ella, Ella. Um, so, 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 yeah, so we, we get that. And then you think, okay, job done. But then there's like half an hour left <laughs> of the film. Yeah, yeah. So where's this going then? Um, I... I don't think I'll be able to put into words how the confusion happens or what, what basically. So the guy who's been helping her turns out, turns around and says, Look, you know, that guy that you thought was dead, whose gravestone you you trashed, um, that's actually my dad. And it's like, <gasps> um, yeah, and again, during the headlights, she's, like, she's so stunned and she doesn't even like look at him, like even speak to him. And he's like, But I wanted to help you, and I and he's a he's a terrible man, and I wanted to help you, and blah blah blah. And you think she kind of like goes okay and forgets not forgets about it, but she kind of like forgives him. Hmm. But then later on we have this weird kind of face-off moment. Do you want to explain this, Dan? So so we we <laughs> <laughs> it is a face off. It's an absolute. It's a face off and a face off. Um, yeah. So we get we get. Um, he reveals that he his dad faked his death because apparently he died at sea. Oh yeah, in a shipwreck. Yeah, he died yeah. in a shipwreck three years ago. That was so. It. So that that's why she feels again feels robbed of her revenge. Feels robbed yeah. of her vengeance because again she went to the grave. He's not. He's not alive. Um, you know, his, her mother killed one of the other um, villains um, yeah. and one of the other bandits and. This this she gets the revelation that he is still alive and he is under a different name, so mm-hmm. that's why she didn't. That's why she didn't know, and he realizes it eventually because because yeah. he comes forward because they have not spoken in years. They're not friendly, you know. Mm-hmm. They're not they're not involved with each other. And he's like, 
And he, he kind of almost subtly kind of admits it without admitting it. It's kind of like, you just leave this story alone. This story's over. Lady Snowblood's story is at an end. Yeah. You yeah. don't need to do anything more. And he's like, no, you did it, didn't you? You you were part of it. It's like, mm-hmm. I was a different person. I'm now, I, I work directly with the government. The government can't get its weapons and stuff without me. I'm mm-hmm. integral to, an integral part of Japan um, currently. And he reveals this to Lady Snowblood and she's like, She's almost like, there's almost a moment where you're like, is, is, is Lady Snowboard going to kill him? Like, is, is she going to kill the newspaper, you know, yeah. the, the reporter who's mm-hmm. the son? Because, you know, it's there's potentially issues like, well, it, it's all it's all evil. It's all part of my revenge. If I get revenge on his son, maybe that's, you know, it's more, it will finally fulfill my need, my desire, yeah. my, my my purpose in life uh, yeah. for, for revenge. Um, but... Uh, you kind of it's quite an extended moment and it's like Maker Kaji is amazing in this movie. I think yeah. her just just there's so much intensity and just a stare. Just any of the yeah. shot any of the shots of her. She's she doesn't need a lot of dialogue, but you know exactly what she's thinking. She's so expressive. Um her physicality. Yeah. Um she's a I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna watch more stuff from her because um I've just subscribed to the Arrow uh, player. It's Arrow, it's like a oh, yeah. Yeah, the Arrow video player. So it's a lot of cult movies and stuff, and there's a lot of Japanese stuff on there as well. And they've got a Mako Kaji collection. So pretty much all of her other big films she was in. So um, Stray, Stray Cat Rock, I think, is one franchise she was in. And Female Prisoner Scorpion 701 is another one, which is, I think, that's also based on a comic book or a manga. Yeah. Um, but that's that's all in there. I think there's I think there's one where she's like a blind swords woman as well, or something, oh, or she's God. or she's a yakuza leader or something. So yeah. so I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna check that out, and I I highly recommend. Also, a gorgeous singer like this, the flower flower of carnage and any of her other songs, just gorgeous. Um, she actually, due to the success of Kill Bill, um, I think it was last year or the year before, she started up her own YouTube channel. What? Yeah. She's got oh, like a. Amazing. She got because because obviously she and she and she hadn't because of Kill Bill she hadn't sung for years but because of the success of it and the popularity and the renewed interest she got back into singing so so oh, she's singing cool. again she's she's got over a hundred credits as well on her IMDb yeah but I saw that I thought, holy moly mental yeah. mental she's yeah. she's a she's a busy busy lady. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, like I, th- I think this is. I, I've not seen a lot of her other films or uh, like all the other ones that you mentioned. But I think this is her most iconic role. Yeah. Um, I think uh, it's only like a third movie or something as well. It's like there's a hand. I think it's like a handful of films she did before. Mm. I'm pretty sure. And then then after that, that's when she just took off. Um, but no, I, th- I think a lot of people should uh, watch her movies if she's as good as in them in them okay. as she is in there. And the direct the director said to her because she almost turned down the female Scorpion film because she was like I'm not quite sure, uh, mm-hmm. and, the, and the the director was like you can't turn this down this this is wow. your role um, yeah. this has been writ- this script this particular adaptation has been written for you um, you know and then again they tailor made it like we said earlier for her even more um, mm-hmm. and she was actually a fan of the manga already so she was well, she was already wow. well up for it so. Um, so an amazing, amazing lady, and 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 probably one of the most kind of iconic Japanese actors of all time. Um, yeah. You know, just just again, just one look, just one one screen grab, one photo, just tells you everything you need to know about the character and and within the film as well. Um, you know, and this this film is so popular as well that it's been remade, including Kill Bill, if you want to include that as a remake, yeah. uh, like several times. Um, in 1977, Broken Oath, it was called. I don't know if that was it. Yeah, I saw that, but it was like not officially a remake. They said, but it pretty much, yeah. but it was. Yeah, unofficial. There's a lot of you'll you'll notice that in international films, there's a lot of unofficial shit, okay. <laughs> unofficial remakes, unofficial right. sequels, and unof- just like like it like uh, I went to see Demons the other week. Um, oh, sorry. yeah, I went to see that in the <laughs> cinema. And it was brilliant. There was a double. It was a double bill they had on, um, and it was fantastic. What, what cinema. Uh, I think it's a Chapel House, Chapel Picture House. It's Demons, as in Dario Argento's Demons. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no way. Yeah, they had Double Bill. It was uh, Demons and Demons 2. Um, Brilliant. So we watched them back to back, um, and it's great. They're doing a lot of kind of cult films at the moment. They're not showing anything new. They're just getting, like, 4K um, versions of them, just projecting them on screen. Yeah. Really fun, nice atmosphere. It's kind of like a um, kind of a – I think it's in Salford. I want to say it's in Salford. Um, yeah. 
kind of this like media platform place. But it was lovely, really nice. Drink, drinks to our table, fantastic. Um, but uh, but yeah, and I was looking at all the sequels, and there's like three Demons Three. There's like another f- four sequels after that, and none of them are official Demon sequels. No, <laughs> not, not one. Um, but yeah, uh, apparently there was another one in 2001 as well called Princess Blade, the Princess Blade. Um, so yeah, so it's clearly it's clearly got its fans out there. Yeah. You know, it's, it's clearly. Um, hugely, hugely influential. Anyway, mm-hmm. we, I got off. I got. Off, I, I was talking oh, yeah. about. I was talking about my love for Mako Kaji too much. <laughs> so we get to um, the party, isn't it? Mm. And um, we think this is where his dad is. Well, he is here. Yeah. And then it becomes a case of mistaken identity. Yeah. So, so the reporter um, kind of uh, drives a coach for us. So they kind of. They they they're working towards the common goal, uh, yep. you know. Uh, even though she was like, "I might still kill you, probably." Um, and mm-hmm. she goes to this party, and this is a big kind of sign of the times that are changing from the Edo Tokugawa period of Japan history, which was all about samurai, yeah. um, and the Meiji period is all about them um, welcoming welcoming the Western world, Western culture, and obviously oh, that was, right, okay. and that's why all the people in that's why all the people in the party uh, they're all. The mostly white people and wearing masks, yeah. Um, and the only one not wearing a mask, and you know, in traditional Japanese attire, is Lady Snowblood, which is mm-hmm. obviously a, a kind of a criticism of of potentially of the time, because um, again, this kind of led to a lot of corruption, the mm-hmm. the Western influence uh, for good or for bad. There was a lot of, um, and you see this a lot more in the sequel, but I don't think the sequel is anywhere near as good as the first one. But if you want to watch it, go ahead. Um, but you see a lot of that, uh, and yeah. So we get we get this. She she finds the guy. She finds the, her final target, the reporter's father, and and they go for a you know regular stuff. Just goes for the sword fight. Yeah. Only for them to kill him and go. Finally, she's killed him. Great. Yeah. And then chops she his hands off, didn't she? <laughs> yeah, she chops both of his hands off quite graphically. They're like f- thrown across the room and yeah. blood spraying everywhere. Only if only for her to notice a loose beard, a flop, a floppy loose beard. And she's like, what is going on here? And she starts pulling away at it and pulling away. And it is the most lifelike mask you could get in uh, yeah. you know, in feudal Japan. <laughs> Cause it is proper, like, like he looks nothing like, like the guy on. Yeah, it just pulls his skin off and she's like, Oh, this isn't who I thought it was. It's so bizarre, but Right. This this leads me up to the the most laughable bit of the film for me. <laughs> the, like the, okay. the so so we she throws I think she throws a sword or something or a shoe or something at uh, this this mirror which is a it's a, it's a one way mirror or two way mirror mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. Um, so she smashes it and she knows someone's been watching them from the other side. So it's heavily it's heavily implied it's the real guy. It's the yeah. real villain. But for some fucking reason. He, you don't, you don't like just see his feet leaving or him running away. He, they smash, they smash the window. He's not on screen. You can't see him in that room. And then he just jumps on screen for no discernible reason. Looks directly at them and is like, and then just, <laughs> and then runs off. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like there was no need- my mirror. Yeah, bro, it's just, oh, it's it's you. Just, it's, it's like it's like you could have you could have ran away the second they were like pulling the mask off. But again, yeah. he he runs off, runs back on screen. And goes, oh, it is me. Yeah, by the way, it definitely is me. Oh, I'm going to go now. See you. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, there was no need for that. There was right. Yeah, that was a bit silly. It just kind of ru- that just kind of ruined that. Like, I mean, I mean, the reveal, the, the 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 mass reveal is a bit silly. But then, just I just think I was just like, there was no point. Like, you just needed like a shot of feet moving, like away from from the door or anything. Like, yeah, it's just and, like and, five minutes of Scooby Doo. Yeah, I just we know it's him. We know it's him. Yeah, we know yeah. he's behind there. We know he's been watching. He's not been killed, so it's definitely him. You know, you could just you know a shot of him running out the room, but like the, the fact that he just kind of goes. It's like some weird like movement piece. It's just kind of like it's like awkwardly it's like you're awkwardly just jumping on stage for no reason. Like yeah, I'm on stage. Okay, yeah. I'm going. It was yeah, that was the only bit I didn't like. I was just like <laughs> yeah. like the rest of the film, perfect. I was just like that one yeah. moment I was like, oh, you ruined it. <laughs> um yeah, and then we get this kind of prolonged battle. He's got the revolver, so he's got the gun. Um yeah. so we've got the reporter 
and and the party doesn't really seem to notice for the longest time as well. <laughs> they're, like, no, they're, they're upstairs, though. they're on the balcony. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. We can't hear gunfire. We can't hear you know people, people screaming or getting their arms cut off. It's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the reporter kind of jumps in the way as well to save Yuki. He mm. kind of jumps like he try, kind of pushed the stops the bullet from hitting her, mm. and he's like having a battle with his dad in the corner, and then. What yeah. happens? And then and then he gets killed and the son gets killed. And, and and I feel like there's almost like Yuki's like almost feeling like the reporter is kind of getting in the way a little bit. Like there's I feel like there's a there's a hint of that, like yeah. I don't I, I know you're helping me, fine, but you're still related to him. He's pure evil, he must die. So it's kind of like it's almost like there's it, it's not an easy kind of alliance between the two. Yeah. Doesn't and, she as well? When she stabs him, she stabs through the reporter to get to. I can't ooh, remember. I ooh, can't remember if she if she impales them both. Um, well, she might do. She might do actually. But maybe this this that is kind of if if that di- does happen, mm. then I guess that is her way of saying you're still. Yeah. You, yeah, I can't. I can't let that go. That you're yeah. still part of him yeah you're you're a you're a piece of him you're a part of him yeah. like i'm part of my mother i'm part of her revenge but you're part yeah. of your father's evil and the, yeah. the sins are revisited on the sun um as per usual uh mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah and then he's he's still not quite dead um and he shoots he shoots yuki um stab, i think he stabbed manages oh no 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 sorry i'm giving that bit away so he shoots Yuki, but she finally kills him and he falls off the balcony, dead. Finally screaming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, um, great, great shot as well of him just falling down um, yeah. for like that a bird's eye view. Um, yeah. And then we and and that and we're well on our way to the end now. And we see Yuki's kind of just wandering out into the snow. Mm-hmm. And she's, you know, she's kind of there's kind of an acceptance of, I think, of of her mission is done. This is what she was made for. This is who she is. This is all what all she's about. Even though, even though she's been given opportunities to to have a better life or to have a fuller life or to not be about revenge, like yeah. you know, even though that's what she's been bred for, literally bred for. Um, yeah. But this, you know, it's all consuming lust for revenge. Is you know, you know, it's just. Again, it's kind of like that cyclical nature. Oh, I just thought of something just before we go into the, the like. I know that was the finale, but the actual mm. end of the movie. Yeah, is that what is that the premise of the movie Hannah with Saoirse Ronan? Is she bred to the killing machine? Yeah, she. I think um, I I quite like that movie actually. Um, yeah. And they made a TV. Amazon made a TV. Yeah, show they've of made it. a show of it now. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering if um, if there's more influences than we can. Can, yeah, that are the obvious ones. If there's things like, yeah, yeah, she, she's kind of In yeah. I, I, if I remember rightly, she's kind of genetically bred to be the perfect soldier. Yeah. Um So I think there is there is that like, element. That element, not like with Lady Snowblood. It's obviously she has the baby and it's trained, but then this yeah. is yeah. So this, I'm sure there's a little bit of influence in there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great movie as well. Really, really. Yeah. I've not seen the series, so I can't comment on that. No, but, I've not yet. But the but the film is nice, short, tight. Good action movie. Uh, yeah, if you're if you're looking for something, well. right? Yeah, um, Eric, Eric Banner and Kate uh, Catherine. Oh, what's her name? Uh, Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. Yeah, Kate Blanchett. That's the one. <laughs> uh, we've got them all. Um, we got them all. But yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got Lady Snowblood is basically where she was at the beginning of the film in the snow, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's like the amount of the amount of blood they must have used in this film as well. It's literally moments of rivers of blood like <laughs> i love that but yeah like the I, I kept thinking that as well it did feel different to kill bill because it was more near the coast um yeah I, I also remember as well this is in chapter form as well much like kill bill yeah yeah um i noticed that yeah they've got named chapters for each part of the film yeah so, yeah it's uh again like we're just pulling them out of our top of our head we're going oh yeah and that and that and that and that <laughs> <laughs> I know there was so, there's so many. Yeah. Um, finally, we get we get to the end. She's dying. She's fulfilled. And but you kind of think maybe it's only one gunshot. Maybe she could probably. And you know she's 
she's got in it she's in her like tight dress so maybe that's keeping the wound kind of all there it's not bleeding out as much as it could do Mm -hmm. could live she could survive she could make it um but then (laughs) but then this this is the this is the kill bill moment where the child comes back for revenge uh because because Kobu actually met with the reporter earlier on in the film and said, that was my, that's my dad you're talking about in this book. He was killed by this woman. I want revenge. Where is she? And he's like, no, you don't. You don't want to go anywhere near her. And she's like, I'll find her. I will find her. Um, and Kobu <laughs> quite literally just runs in with a sword yeah! and, just, yeah. and just stabs her. And um, but that's what she said to her, didn't she? She was like, "If you need me, come and find me. I'll tell you exactly where where I am." And she's accepting of that because that's exactly what she's done. Yeah. For her yeah, exactly. Parents. And it's it's what she would have done as well. Like in in her situation, it is what she's done in that situation. Um, and yeah. again, and again, like that, like the Kill Bill moment. You know, it's like, yeah, come and find me. Come and find me whenever you're ready. If you want. Yeah. If, yeah. St- if you still if you still roar about this or saw about this i think she says um yeah fan fantastic um just end um again there is there is a sequel so but for me i think the lady snowblood tale ends here the the manga ends here so the the full manga is told within this film so so the original creator's story was completed through you know full this this is a full adaptation of that um you know obviously you can't fit everything in but it's an adaptation of that full arc for the character um the second one again is there but it's it's just not as good cinematography acting music uh fight choreography it's just not quite as good um but if you What's the premise of that one so basically she's kind of lost her lust for vengeance but she's being chased down for being an assassin um by the police and then she's hired to fight um to quell these anarchists um and these anarchists are poor they're you know being mistreated you know they're you know um it's it's very it's more politically based this this film right. um it's, it's the the politics are at the forefront of this story um so she's hired to do that but then she she learns that she's she's obviously doing it for the wrong reasons she's she's wanting to avoid being uh, executed uh, for her crimes but then she turns she mm-hmm. flip she flips her allegiance and starts going after the corrupt government officials um a bit like battle royale yeah a little the, bit yeah. um they turn against the Government, don't they? The, the small group, that the, the group of survivors. Yeah, I've never like seen. I've, I've never seen the sequel. <gasps> oh no! Good. You really need to. Yeah, it's really good. The um, so the premise starts off the same, except this time they're partnered up. So you've got the explosive necklaces, haven't you? The bomb mm. necklaces mm. in the first one. But this time they discover, and it's like the most brilliant scene that um, it, you're all partnered up. So if one of you, if one of your bombs detonates or you die, mm. then whoever you're connected to, theirs will start going off. And it's a brilliant scene. Oh, because no. It starts the same, but then about a third of the way through, I'd say a third of the way through, um, it's kind of from what if my memory serves me well, the the, the tournament's kind of cancelled, and it's because this group mm. led by the survivor of the first movie is going for the the whole system, mm. basically. Um, oh no, please watch it. I've got it on DVD. Yeah. I'll lend it to you. It's really yeah. really. Yeah, no, cool. I'd, I'd I'd like to. I've been meaning to, but um, yeah. I mean, I mean, speaking of rip-offs and homages, you know, that sounds yeah. a lot. Sounds a lot like Hunger Games to me, doesn't it? <laughs> oh well, no, it came first. It yeah, came I know, first. I know, I know it did. I know it did. I'm just, um, I'm just a... saying that, like that, the Hunger Games well, yeah. is pulling quite a lot from Battle Royale, yep. you know. Mm-hmm. And I Definitely. and I prefer I prefer Battle Royale myself, but uh, I do too. And I can I can get why people like you know Hunger Games. More power to you if you like it. That's fine. Um, I've, I, again, I've not even seen all of them. I think I've seen the first two, maybe. I think. Yeah, I think I have as well. Um, so when I was uh, doing like a bit of research about this and just um, just checking what Tarantino's directly said about Lady Snowblood and that obviously mm. you mentioned the, the cast we all watch it on breaks mm. uh, during the filming of Kill Bill. I saw that apparently in 2020 there was kind of rumours that he was going to do volume three. Oh. And uh, I think he's, he has said, oh, I have got a premise that would work. 
but yeah, but this, that's basically all that's come from it. And he said it's probably three years in the making, but then COVID happened, so maybe it's more like five years in the making. Yeah. So Vivica A. Fox has apparently said to Tarantino that he needs to cast Zendaya as Panita Green, I think was her name. Okay. The younger daughter. Um, if, if he was going to follow that storyline, but then obviously you've got Beatrix's daughter, Bibi, as well. So what, I don't know if it'd be more them against each other and Uma Thurman would kind of just be in the movie a little bit. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that, I think that would be really interesting, to be honest. And it would be very much kind of Lady Snowblood again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it's it's very interesting. But I don't know. Uh, like I think Zendaya would be good, but she's I think she's like twenty four. I don't know if they wanted to go for that age group. Perfect. Mm-hmm. If younger, there's an actress called Storm Reed who I think would be perfect. So um, Storm Reed, I think she's known for uh, A Wrinkle in Time, but then she's also been in When They See Us and um, the most recent Invisible Man. Um, but yeah, I think she'd be brilliant as I think it was an actress called Nikki Bell who was the original um daughter. But yeah, I think potentially we could have another volume in the next few years. I would I would definitely watch that. I would definitely I'd, I'd be well up for that. And I lo- I love that. Yeah. I love the idea of the continuation. I love that that's, you know, there's that little that little nugget there. And and again, it's like you know, revenge is messy. It's never clean. It's never you know. It's always all the all the people that you don't want to die end up dying. You know, I, I think that's a really you know. I, I love. I'm I'm a I'm a good you know. I'm not a, I'm not a vengeance driven person myself. <laughs> um, but I always I always love the moral question or you know. And if and if we are if I do if I want to if I put myself in the vengeance seeking shoes of a character, I want those villains to be like the worst fucking villains ever like like there's no redeem almost redeemable features but then again like with this i do like the 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 moral quandary as well um but yeah i love i love films like you know like death wish um death sentence with with kevin bacon was really good um you see the brave one with jodie foster that's a good one yeah, I think that when her partner's killed in um, Central Park. Yeah, that yeah. One? yeah. And when I saw that, I love that one. I love Jodie Foster. So yeah, she was she was great in that. It's I, I think it's um it's the guy from one of the guys from Lost who's a partner. I think. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm always a I'm a big fan. So so uh, I think we'll definitely do some uh, more revenge themed stuff in the future. I think because that's a, yeah. a genre, genre I've not really tapped yet on the podcast. Yeah, if you go on to Shudder, there is, I think it's actually called Revenge. <laughs> yeah, watch Revenge on Shudder. It's really good. I will. I will. I've I've, I've seen it. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on that. Um so I think I think we're slowly coming to to a close. Um thank you very much for thank you very much for joining us. So I will say we will say this. If if you've heard any any uh building work on the roof of Rasheen's uh, end of the recording. We are doing this on Zoom. Um, she's she's ha- she's got builders around. What can you say? Um, so apologies if that's uh, if that if you've heard that. But I'm going to do my best to cut that out. But um, it's just one of those things. Just happens. We all, we all have it. I had the builders on on my roof today, so it could have easily happened to me. So uh, so apologies if that's uh, disturbed you in any way. But um, Rasheen is always. Top form, very professional, uh, excellent guest, as I'm per so usual. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Got nothing to apologise for, Rasheen. Nothing, nothing to apologise for. But uh, I'm just going to have a quick look and see if there's anything else I want to mention. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that this is, this is by Toho Studios, which is famously the studio that brought us uh, Godzilla. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't same, know that. Same film cool. studio. So uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of kind of cool. Um, oh, that's also what, something I wanted to mention. You mentioned the lack of dialogue for Lady Snowblood. Yeah. And this is what actually what uh, Maker Kaji requested um, to make her a bit more like you know like the man with no name like. Um, oh, right. like like Clint Eastwood, he asked for like less dialogue in those films because the presence and the the mysteriousness and the otherworldliness of that character, uh, much like Lady Snowblood, who is you know mm-hmm. a child from the netherworld, you know she's not quite human, you know it's, it's implied. Um, she yeah, so she's she requested less and less dialogue, but again, like we said, a look. She's got that killer look about her, those those pointed eyebrows as well. It's like, phoom, like she's always yeah. always looks a little <laughs> bit pissed off, uh, which yeah. I like. Um, like yeah. probably what the manga was drawn like. Oh yeah, well, really to show like yeah, extreme. She's actually angry. The eyebrows are yeah. 
Yeah. Oh well. Well, yeah. manga, manga, and anime are all about extreme eyebrows because that's all they ever do. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, I think that's everything. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. Um, are you familiar? With, are you familiar with Post Malone? Not massively, but when I was researching it, I saw this. Go on, tell everyone. Uh, so Post Malone did a music video for Rockstar, the song Rockstar, and again, heavily influenced and an homage to Lady Snowblood. And that was that was only like a couple of years ago or last year. Yeah. So it's stood the test of time, definitely. As even even to this day, you know, if she's got a YouTube channel, you know, it's still heavily influential. There's tons of videos on YouTube about it, discussing it uh, in in detail, uh, much like we've done. Um, but yeah, if if you've not seen it, please try and hunt it down. There is there are DVDs on eBay available. There are. Um, it's it's like um, in the UK, it's like an Arrow release. So you get the Blu-ray, which has both films, but you also get two DVDs as well. Um, not much in the way of special features, I will say that, but um, it's a gorgeous film, and it, it, you should definitely watch on Blu-ray if you can. Yeah, um, definitely. Because it's it's just a, a visual treat for the eyes, um, and it's a great story. It's a compelling story, compelling performances, great editing, great cinematography you name it it's all good it's all good probably one of the best films i've i've covered on on the podcast as well um it's well up there for me uh, as a film but yeah that is that is us um this has been fantastic you're amazing as usual uh bringing great insight and and information as per um thank you again i know i know you're very busy so thank you again for taking the time even with the no, builders no problem, no problem. <laughs> i'm looking at gaps when i stopped really and so be like thank you for having me thanks thanks it's good bye um but yeah um can you so i know i know that you and uh, you and monster mac uh laurie are on the social medias uh i've been really enjoying your short films uh, i've been really enjoying your makeup thank as well you. Um, Thank you. It's been, I've been. It's there's been a lot going on recently, so we have like had a tiny little like break. Yeah, uh, but we enough. are. We've got a few ideas coming up. Hopefully, going to try and squeeze in two films over summer whilst we've got the ta- whilst we put the lights outside. Yes. Oh God, yeah, um, definitely. Um, so is it? Is it? Um, you're on. You're on, You guys are on Instagram. You're on Twitter. Yes, so we are Fright Hub UK. Uh, my handle is Row.Scream and Laurie is Monster Mac, as in the monsters. I'll I'll tag I'll tag all you guys in all my posts related to this. Um, but yeah, I really I, I really loved um, your recent short film, the the one with the the baby and and the or oh, on the on the one with the clown is very. Ugh. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we've got we've entered that into a competition, so we should hear back soon. Uh, if oh, that fingers crossed. Any, anywhere, fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers cool. crossed. But yeah, it's, it's all good stuff. So yeah, and if you ever you ever need my help with anything, I'm more than happy to to be involved uh, in whatever Yay, capacity, you. whatever <laughs> capacity you need me to do. I'll I'll find the time. I'll make I'll make the effort. So you just whatever you want, you let me know and I'll I'll do it. But yeah, um, uh, you're not much on. You're not really on Facebook, are you? You guys really not not Facebook? No, no, we're not. No. That's fine. That's not fine. our bag. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not a TikToker, but that's you know, that's it's for each, yeah. to each their own. To each their own. But um, yeah. Uh, but all the all the stuff all the stuff you guys post is fun, amazing. You know, you know, I love my horror shit, so I'm I'm well into that. Um, all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah. So you can find me as per usual at Secret Balls on Facebook. Um, on Twitter, it's at Dan underscore Balls. Instagram, it's Spider Dan Secret Balls. And if you're going to interact with us, don't forget to use the hashtag prepare for prattle. And for everything else you need to know about the podcast, swing over to spiderdanandthesecretballs.com on the World Wide Web to email me, read reviews, and learn how you can support the podcast. Speaking of supporting the podcast, I'd like to thank my patrons on Patreon. I am Jack's Musings, Paul Meller, Max Byrne, Tony Farina, and our personal friend, Rasheen Scott Hodgson. Um, they're all good lads. Thank you guys for supporting and giving all you can. I know it's a difficult time, but I appreciate every single penny you give. Uh, and please continue to do so as long as you are able. And if you're in the position to support the show, that would be amazing. But I understand if you're not. So thank you very much. Um, Rasheen, again, this has been fantastic. You are my, you are my very, you are my very own Snow White. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you saved the day yet again. Um, thank you again for for taking the time out to uh, talk weird and wacky films with me. No, no problem. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, and I'll get you on as as soon as I possibly can again. When I, I mean, I'm, I'm fully booked pretty much for the rest of the year now. So, uh, <laughs> might, might, 
saying. It might have to be. It might have to be till uh, next year. But I'm a, I'm a little ahead of. I've gotten a little ahead of myself, which is good. So I'm not not struggling to to fit stuff in. Um, but yeah, this has been great. I know you've got a lot of stuff on today, so I'll let you go. But thank you again. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.